Hey and welcome back to the channel. Today's video, that's my hand and that's a diesel heater. Not just a diesel heater. It is the LF Pros air heater. All in one parking heater diesel machine. And this video will just talk about this machine, about this diesel heater, what you need to set it up, get it out of the package and let it run and use it. Thanks for watching again. Today's video is just purely about this heater. Those diesel heaters have lately a huge hype and a lot of people like it and a lot of people take it camping, take it car camping into vans and stuff like that. And those heaters are different from the ones you maybe put in a camper van. Just, just saying, just as an example. To give you a couple more details about this heater and why this heater. This heater is a nice form factor. It comes already elevated. Elevated means in this case that it's higher for the exhaust and everything else. So you can see later how we do the installation. It does come with three different power supplies or power supply options. You can either run it with one at 10 volts for your garage, for example, with 12 volt of a normal lithium ion phosphate battery or whatever you have in your car, or even a 24 volt battery pack. So whenever you're running maybe a 24 volt battery pack, you then have to use a step down. And this one is a five kilowatt diesel heater. They call it all-in-one air diesel parking space heater. <laughs> and here it comes with a stylish design for small space. And it does come with a remote control, LCD screen, and is there anything else I forgot? Yeah, you know what? We'll just open it up and see what's in the box so you have an idea what's coming with this device and what you might need to buy extra. There's a smaller box over there and the diesel heater itself. And you can see the form factor is incredible. Small. Those are the dimensions. That's the weight they advertise it with. And on the back, I want to show you around. On the back, you can see some specifications, some information, fuel type, diesel, obviously. Input power, and that's kind of the power we need to have if you want to let it run continuously. Additionally to the fuel diesel, 40 watts and the output power will be up to 5 kilowatt. It is made in China. It does come with some rubbing. You can, from the styrofoam probably, you can get it cleaned. In the front view, you can see display. We have most likely a air inlet. And then we have a positive and negative terminal and we have a little remote. One thing which is pretty cool about this device, they have a re-engineered, that's what they said at least, advertised with a re-engineered spill-proof um, cap up here. Yeah, we'll see. Um, it has some rubber gasket around here so nothing can float down or shoot. It's just a rubber gasket around here. And then you have those handles. Now we should see what's in this box. That's empty. An actual manual. More instructions and more hoses and more clamps and bolts. Small hose in here. Power supply. The muffler. Clamps. Brackets. Air intake. Exhaust. Hot air coming out. So they did, did include those instructions for the T3. That's actually the heater device. It talks about display icon description. So that is something which you should read and I should read to understand what you can set up and how you have to set it up in case there's something you need to set up or change in settings. Very important. And I think that's the one we have here, the N4. All right, so here you can see the brackets and I'll put here the heater and that's the bottom side. So you can see we have two pipes. One is an inlet, one is an outlet. That goes into the combustion chamber where basically fuel will get mixed and burned with air. We now need to make sure that we have those little brackets installed so it's elevated and we can install the pipes without any issue. There are supposed to be some instructions and here's the QR code, but uh, it didn't work for me on the website yet. Um, so I'll look at this, how this is installed and then I hopefully do the installation correct. And yes, do not pour diesel in it yet. <laughs> we'll do all the assembly first before we can pour diesel in it. Therefore, we'll take off those bolts. And I think they gave us two mounting brackets. So this one is for flat mount surface. When you have something, a hole for example here, so you can mount it like this, or you can mount it like this. That will work, so it keeps the slim design. We don't need those ones in my case. 
because I will have that as standalone, so I will install everything like this. So we need only two bolts per bracket. I would not use an impact. It's aluminum, it's pretty light. And at the end, for me at least, I can place it like this. And I could, if I want to, potentially put some bolts in here. And... All right, looking at those two holes here, it's already a little bent. So the spring which is in here is already bent because it was placed on it and standing on it the whole time. Get a new one maybe. So let's see, we do have hose on this side, a little bit dented on this side as well. So I'll check which one would fit. Honestly, it looks like, I'll check the other one first. It's over here, it fits over here. Here it's more loose, so this one's smaller, and here this one is bigger. So I'll use this one. That means I'll get a clamp ready. One of those clamps are provided. Put it over here, put it over here. And I try to put it in a direction, orientation, where I can access it. All right, pretty tight. We will need to bend the exhaust pipe differently. But first we need to try make it fit over here. And yeah, it does fit, but same like before. Let's get one of those clamps. Again, those small clamps here, right? Same as before, we need to find a good location that looks pretty good. Hand tight. There we go. I want to have this one standing and not touching the ground ideally. So it means we have to find a way where we push it out and ideally to the side, because one side here, this is the output and the other side, I just hear my finger loop. This is where it sucks in the air, so as much as I understand so far. So what I don't understand, why don't I include a little 90 degree elbow, which would make it way easier. Now I have to really force it to go around. So I really hope I'm not breaking anything here. That would be a big, big bummer. So I bend it over. Ideally you have a 90 degree you can use here. Um, I don't have that, so I'll use what they provided. I'm turning it around now like so, but that means right now we do have here the air intake, just this one, and the exhaust over here. So for the air intake, I didn't see this um, since I don't have really instructions, but I'm doing it what I think makes sense. You want to have the air intake for sure somewhere on the other side, ideally. So the air intake for the entire device going in here get heated, gets heated up and pushed out on the other side. So I can use this clamp, for example, I can just install it up here. Similar or same for the exhaust, but keep in mind this exhaust is getting freakingly hot. So um, I would recommend for this purpose, getting some exhaust tape like this one, which just helps you in case you touch it accidentally. Now we'll install our muffler and everything will need a burn in, just uh, if you're wondering how that will smell later. <laughs> it will smell wonderful. To be honest, those are the most important things you need to do right at the beginning, but in case you are setting it up already completely and you want to be done with it. In this case, you grab this. It's kind of a trier or insulated hose inside and outside, you see. It's uh, on the shorter side. You can also buy online those hose as well. They are longer, so of course the other one as well. I feel like those are a little bit better insulated over here. So it's up to you. They also come with clamps. They also screw on. Um, I would prefer, to be very honest, and that comes already, which is pretty cool, with the exhaust tape. I would use those ones. They, you can just hand tighten, which makes it really easy. That means for me, that's basically all there is to. Now we need to fill in a little bit of diesel. Ideally, so, and that's pretty cool about this one. As I mentioned, it has a rubber seal around here, so you shouldn't spill it too much. Please, one thing you have to keep in mind, I'm not opening this up, you can, but you need to unbolt everything. What would be great is a little filter up here, uh, because you don't want to get any dirt in here and then might just, you know, clog the lines. That would be a huge, huge bummer, trust me. And no one wants to have that and deal with that. I'll just go ahead and fill it up. Not full yet, but I don't have to fill it up all the way. I'll close this immediately. I don't want to have anything inside. 
The next step is connecting this little friend to a battery source. So that means I'll turn it around. So you can just use those wires they provided with it. Um, I'll do it differently and as always, you are more than welcome to do it your way. My method will be I'm connecting an Anderson connector. Alrighty. Plugging it in, but therefore I want to open the garage. We don't want to start a diesel heater inside where the exhaust and the fumes come out. And here we can hear the first clicking sound because it's uh, pulling in the f diesel. Bang, that feels like it's getting faster and faster and you don't know what's happening. And as I learned at the beginning, it's always pulling more energy. So it means we are right now at around almost 10 amp, 9.5, 9.5 amp. And you have to let it run for sure, at least an hour or longer. So there's a lot of information on this display and I still try to learn this myself. And it also has some buttons. And this unit, that's something which um, I think was mentioned somewhere also, has a timing operation. For now, we just need to have the unit up and running. Let me show you again power consumption we're having here. Right now we're looking at three, 3.6 between 3 and 3.6 amps. I don't know if you saw that, but I did also install here the filter, very important. You should do that before you start it, obviously. I didn't, but you should. And so this is the intake side. You can see I did mount the hose because I want to see how actually warm it is when it's back there. So we'll measure that. Right now we're having around 50 degrees Celsius coming out. 120 degree Fahrenheit coming out. So it just reduced the temperature, but the exhaust pipe is 265, 272. Wow. A lot of material inside which needs to just first time running. It smells not good, so don't breathe everything in. Since it's still burning in, I want to show you one other option or possibility you can do in regards of using your cheap Wrangler JL as an example. I found this uh, tutorial and information from Cheaper Cheaper TV, uh, link up there. And he just built himself, I think his name is Dino, he just built himself uh, some kind of, uh, what is it, a plucking window thing or whatever. And he just built himself Rip. this little construction. So you can see this uh, made of this uh, board, uh, link in the description below as well as well as a vent up here, which attaches to the hose. On the other side, uh, the duct coming in. This one I made for the driver's side, but when you just switch this around on the other side, then this one also works for the passenger side, obviously. And it's pretty straightforward. You just have to pop it in here, pop it in there in the channel, so the window has to be open up. And then you can slide it up. Like so. And then you have to close the window. And that is pretty much it. Then you only need to take the hose for the hot air and you attach it. And I'm just using here this, I think it is a laundry hose or something, three inch and it's 60 feet long. But what you can do with it, it's just, I'm using those clamps which you can tighten by hand. So you just put it over here, screw it together. That's all. And then you can just attach this one to your diesel heater. And the reason this being here on the driver side or being in the first row, um, when you are laying car camping back there, rear and back and they're getting the hot air in there. It might just get too hot. I'm taking it down. There you are. So I want to highlight two or three things um, what I've encountered. Um, I did let it burn in quite a, lot a long time. I think it was more than three hours. I heard something like you should do that a full tank. So it would be five liters full tank. I have not done that yet. But um, what I've done, so I get myself those 90 angle degree elbow pipes for the exhaust. And that's something which would be great if that would have, you know, come from the factory. Having this elbow makes it way easier instead of bending it because there's always a chance you break the exhaust. So that happened to me once. <laughs> when you have the elbow, the elbow is too long. Those brackets are too short. So having a little more length in those brackets down here, those feet would be amazing. You always have to be careful now, or at least me, I'm not putting it on wood. 
because this thing is getting freaking hot. Usually, and that's something which the instruction call out, you should have the exhaust pipe straight, pretty horizontally going away. That's one thing. And the other thing here, you can see I used the exhaust tape here. Uh, it did do a good job, still it is also getting hot. Then we do have the front, which is this side. Uh, you do not need those thick wires. That's just me because that's what I had laying around with my Anderson connector. You should rather go with the uh, smaller ones. I want to talk a little bit more about the display. And that is something, and that is something I can show you now uh, when it's off, and I will show you then later when it's on. But um, therefore I have to change the position because I'm in a garage here. All right, I hope this is clear. You can see it, um, time is obviously off by a lot at the moment. But what you can do in this setup when it's off, so this is the power on off, this is a setting button, this is up and down, and this is a turning knob as well as OK wheel. So you just saw I clicked it once. When I do it three times quickly within three seconds or something, those numbers pop up and those numbers you can now set it and schedule it basically when this one should come on. That means one, two, three. We see it now I can turn to the right. Then I can say one, two, and it just goes through and wherever, you know, I'm, I'm here when I have it running in like one hour, for example. So I would go here, hit enter. And in one hour it would start up and wait five seconds. Then it just confirms with this beep and done. All right, let's adjust the time. So it means three times really quick. One, two, three, turn to the left, hit enter. So I'll try it again. One, two, three, turn left, hit enter. Now it's blinking. Now we can adjust the time up here to whatever time we have. I don't even know what time it is. Then hit enter once. Then I can adjust the minutes, hit enter. Now I wait, five seconds. Now it beeps, now it's adjusted. Now when I take this one hour off, one, two, three, go over, hit, now it's this underline, hit enter. Nope, that didn't work out. All right, one more, one more time, one, two, three, go over. Now I go to the one. I go all, scroll all the way through 24 and then one again, 24, one, enter. Nope, didn't work out. I can't turn this off anymore. Don't ask me how, why. Um, should be pretty easy, straightforward. Unfortunately, it's not. Yeah, I don't know why you're not having a Bluetooth app for this, why you're not having an easier functional display. There is a link also here would you describe it uh, maybe in better, maybe they have more patience, I don't. <laughs> so apologies for that. All right, one more thing. The display, it, it, right now it's connected to power. The display seems to be going on and off depending on if you press it. So when you press it one, two, three probably, three maximum seconds, maybe two, display turns on, but the, the entire diesel heater is off. So I could press it, hold it. It looks like it turns off, the display. So at least that's what's happening when the diesel heater is off right now. But we need to start it. So that's something I'll adjust and we'll go from there. Okay, what you can see here first on the display, that should be the voltage it looks like, I assume. The V or U 13.2. And here we can see there's a the clo blocks, I believe. Um, so they're glowing, start to heat up. So I'm looking at the battery, it's at 12.96 volts. Well, I'm not sure if this is an accurate reading here or what it should show us. Unfortunately, I don't have any instructions for that, but right now we can see here in the display that uh, it starts firing up. You can also hear it. Now we could use either the buttons up and down, or we could just use this remote. And right now I set it to um, PV, like power. And you know, it's a five kilowatt heater. So we could use this one. So I don't wanna crank it up all the way. I wanna crank it down to need it on full speed. So 1.4 is the bare minimum you can do. Change the setting. I have to wait five seconds and it's adjusting. If I wanna use temperature, I need to click on settings. And the settings changes to T24, but I don't wanna do that. I'm gonna stay with power in this case. That's also the quietest it can go. I don't have uh, the hose for the hot air 
attached yet. It's just to showcase you how it works. I will have a follow-up video just to show you how you can possibly set it up with uh, the installation. Um, I showed you earlier in this video. Just want to make sure that you can see that and want to make sure that you see also uh, in the nature how that could work out. And by the way, the display you cannot take off. It's not detachable. It's fixed in there, it looks like. All right, now it's up and running, so I could do the, the 3D time. Okay, 3 and then can change it. So you can see here, I guess maybe that's how long it should run and when it should turn off. Uh, or I can just press and hold it longer and the time disappears, but everything else stays on, it looks like. Which would be a huge bummer, because when you want to sleep, for example, you don't want to have a lot of light everywhere. When this one stays on, would be great if it turns off, we'll see. The fan is pretty loud, you can hear that. But as soon as it gets to this 1.4 kilowatt, it's pretty quiet, I feel like. I'll display the dim a little bit. But that's basically it. There's not a lot more we can do in this display, as much as I'm aware of. Try to find more, I didn't. So maybe there is someone out there who can explain it a little bit better. The instructions are not really giving us a lot. And let me turn it off. And to turn off, either with the remote, which is weird, just one time short because here when you hit the off button one time short it doesn't do anything you have to hold it three seconds and then it's off and don't disconnect it immediately let it do its stuff to burn all the fumes everything in there just to make sure later it can store it properly and by the way this unit i believe can be used up to 2000 meters in elevation it does not an, does not have an automatic elevation adjustment so it means be careful when you go in high elevation with that there we have the unit the LF pros diesel leader it's the N4 which you're looking at and this unit looks like it's a solid unit what I didn't talk about but what you can also see is the fuel level up here of the tank which is basically here the level kind of um, as well on the other side because it looks like it has a form shape to it there's a section of it and up here is a section of it so it has a weird shape to it which which you have to keep in mind when you look at the level. But everything else, it feels like it's spill-proof. So that's good. I was able to connect everything pretty easy. It's all in one unit, that's how they call it. All in all, this unit is small, tiny. It does a great job when you just wanna be in, uh, you know, when you wanna stay below 2000 meters. That's pretty great to see. The only concern what I have, or not concern, it's wrong, but um, the, the feedback I would have is the display. Um, turning off because I didn't see to turn it off at all. It did dim at one point luckily But I, I'm not able to turn it off in the off state. You can turn it off, but it's I don't get that part But when it's on you cannot turn it off just the display itself That would be great to see everything else works great out of the box No big issues and yeah, the only thing you need is a power source and then 40 watt beginning 110 120 watts at a startup and then it just reduce it over time and it's a very very nice uh, partner very nice partner um, heating up that sounds wrong but it's a very nice companion which helps you stay warm that sounds also weird but anyways you know what i mean it keeps you warm if you need to do i will not put it to the real life test pretty soon so i hope that i can film that part as well and also give you an idea how long does five liter actually hold on because that's something i don't know it's not like a car where you know oh it takes 10 miles per gallon i have no idea so we'll see I hope you enjoyed the video, leave your comments below and if you have not subscribed yet, consider subscribing. If you like that stuff, please like the video, of course, and I hope to see you next time. Thank you. Cheers!